prove that in this active circuit realized uh, with two ideal op amps, the input impedance, Z in, effectively resembles an inductance, L, even though we don't have any inductor in this circuit. And the only thing that we have, as you can see, is just a capacitor C as impedance Z2 and a bunch of resistors and also the impedance C1. So uh, to, to do that quickly, uh, just take a look at the first op amps, op amp number one. And in this case, we make the assumption that the supply voltages, positive and negative supply voltages of ideal op amp is properly applied so that both op amps actually are in linear region of operation and are not saturated. With that in mind, let's uh, to find Zn, we need to apply a test voltage at input, let's say Vtest or Vn, and then after applying that, we need to find I test. So I apply V test and let's say we find I test and then Z in will be equal to V test divided by I test. So let's apply um, V test and find I test. Okay, if I apply V test at the input, because we are making the assumption that op amp is in linear region of operation and is properly biased and set up in the form of a negative feedback, as you can see, therefore uh, the Virtual short should be valid, so virtual short is valid, and as a result of that, the voltage at negative input terminal of the op amp should be equal to the voltage at positive input terminal. In this case, for op amp number one, since a positive input terminal has voltage Vt, for negative is also becoming Vt. Effectively, when you look at op amp number one, it is in the form of a non-inverting uh, amplification or amplifier. So the voltage at the output, or let's say V out 1, is becoming equal to, so it's a non-inverting amplifier scenario, because the input is applied at positive input terminal. And uh, it's clear that for the non-inverting amplifier scenario, V out is just 1 plus alpha R2 divided by R2, so alpha R2 divided by R2 times V test which, as a result, we understand that V out 1 is 1 plus alpha times V test. Okay, that's good. So we have the voltage at this node, V out 1. Uh, remember that this IT, let me change the color so that it's clear what I'm showing. Uh, take, take a look at this IT, or the current that is flowing in. There is nothing that can go to the input uh, terminal of ideal op amp because it has infinite impedance. So effectively, the only two other current is I1 here that goes through this R1 and I2 here that goes through the top R1. So remember that I test is equal to I1 plus I2 and, my, and our job here is to find I1 and I, I2. Okay, so I1 is equal to the voltage at uh, the left hand side of R1 is obviously V test and the voltage at the right hand side of R1 is VO1 as we just talked about it. So VO1 divided by R1. Okay, the, the good news is we just found VO1 as a function of uh, V test. So if we substitute for that, what we find is um, V test times 1 minus 1 minus alpha divided by R1, which means negative alpha uh, divided by R1 times V test. Okay, so that is I1 as a function of V test. That's very good news. So to find I2, the last one, um, so remember this is equation number one here. Okay, this is equation number two. And uh, to find I2, I just need to uh, deal with the output, final output voltage V out two. Okay, so the second op amp is also properly biased. As you can see, the positive input terminal is at zero voltage because virtual short is there. Therefore, the negative input terminal is at zero. You can see that effectively from perspective of, let me change the color so that uh, we have also additional, uh, uh, let's say this color this time. So now we can see that from perspective of V out one, op amp number two looks like a inverting amplifier. So uh, let me change the color to something that is uh, visually better. 
Okay, so from perspective of the second op amp, we, we have an inverting amplifier scenario. By that, I mean you're dealing with V out one, sensing or at the input of Z one, and then it goes to negative input terminal of, of the op amp number two, which positive input terminal is grounded. And then we go to a Z2, which is a cap. So Z2, which is the cap capacitor here. So it's a one over CS um, or one over JC omega if you're doing sinusoidal steady state analysis. So this is a simple inverting amplifier scenario. And in case of inverting, the relationship between V out and uh, V V out two and uh, V out one is clear. You can say that V out two is equal to negative Z two over Z one times V out one. So therefore, as a result of that, I can say V out two is equal to um, so Z one is clearly just z1 let's keep it as it is but z z2 let's also keep the z2 as it is uh, it's fine i'm gonna i'm gonna deal with it later but v out one we just found it that v out one is one plus alpha times vt so let me change that to one plus alpha times vt that's v out two okay great now what's the benefit well let's find the i2 and let me go back to uh, the original color so I2, the current that is going through uh, the top R1 resistor, is the voltage on the left side of R1, which is V test, as you can see. So uh, we have V test on one side of our top R1, and we have V out 2 on the other side of top R1. So therefore, V test minus V out 2 divided by R1. Well, V test is V test, but V out two we already found V out two as a function of V test. Let's say equation number three. So I'm going to use equation number three and factor out V test. So it become one minus minus. So be careful. So one minus minus become one plus, and then Z two over Z one times one plus alpha. All right, so uh, what is the benefit uh, that we get out of this one? Uh, okay, so um, what we get is, of course, divide by R1. Don't forget that. Okay, so what is the next step? Well, let's name this equation number four. Let me change the color so that it's obvious, uh, visible. So this is equation number four. Now, I am almost done because I go back to equation one and I use this time black color. So from equation one, from equation one, we know that I test is I1 plus I2. Now, using equation two to, to substitute for I1 and using equation four to substitute for I2, I get negative alpha over R1 times V test plus um, one plus, let me exactly write it as we found, one plus Z2 over Z1 times one plus alpha divide by R1 times V test. Okay, so uh, what I can do is I can uh, factor out a V test, so I get V test over R1 times minus alpha plus one uh, plus Z2 over Z1 times one plus alpha. Okay, now we know what Z2 is. Z2 is one over CS. So now is the good time to substitute for Z2. So I'm gonna say one over uh, Z1 CS, that's substitution for Z2, and as a result, what I get is this combination. So I get VT over R1 times 
uh, 1 minus alpha plus 1 plus alpha over Z1 Cs. Okay, so uh, what is the benefit of this? Uh, okay, this is what I found for IT. So IT ends up to be this value, equation number 5. So let's name this equation number 5. And finally, as the last step, uh, Z in is V test over I test, right? I just found I test as a function of V test. So I'm going to say Z in is V test over I test. And then I am going to use equation 5 to substitute for I test. And if I do that, I test is in denominator. And there is R1 in denominator of R test. So it goes up, it becomes R1 over um, R1 over 1 minus alpha plus 1 plus alpha uh, divided by C1 Cs. Okay, so let's see what we can do. Imagine that if I set alpha equal to 1, so I'm not doing anything special, what I'm saying is this alpha or the uh, coefficient or factor behind R2, I can set it to equal to 1. If that is the case, then I have R1 over 2 divided by Z, Z1 Cs. So it becomes R1 divided by 2 Z1 Cs. Okay, um, and let's set the Z1 equal to some resistor, like R, and then, like R2, say, and then what I get is I get R1, R2 over 2, C, S. So what I'm trying to say in this uh, analysis for this circuit is effectively I found Zn or basically what is sensed as input impedance of this circuit as, it, as we look at the input of this circuit is some coefficient that is basically depending on the value of impedances we use in this circuit and then multiplied by just S. So this is same as we say the impedance is equal to L. L times s, which is the trademark or basically the impedance of, effectively the impedance of an in inductance. So uh, L is the induct effective inductance that is equal to R1 times R2 uh, times C divided by 2. And therefore, by proper selection of R1, R2, C, we can actually realize uh, the inductance L without having any inductor in this circuit. This is a good way to realize uh, an inductor uh, with proper range or size just by using a bunch of resistor and capacitor, uh, given that we make the assumption that alpha equal to 1 and Z1, which is the middle impedance, equal to, equal to just some resistance R2 that we select ourselves. Okay, so I hope that this circuit is interesting circuit and this analysis is helpful in terms of both showing that using active circuit and two op amp and just a capacitor and a bunch of resistor, we can realize an effective in inductance. And two, uh, just an exercise to show how we can find input impedance of an active circuit, assuming it's properly biased and nothing is saturated. Of course, in practice, the hardship uh, is uh, keeping the circuit stable and uh, not and keeping the op amps uh, not saturated for the specific range of inductance we want to realize in this circuit so that is the actual challenge in real life uh, but this circuit or a variation of this circuit can be properly used for, to realize a range of um, inductance uh, okay so i hope that this example is helpful